Here the extruder has been mounted. The motor's in the back. The motor shaft is peeking through the middle here. There's a gear attached to that motor shaft. The whole assembly out here is spring-loaded so that as filament feeds through the top, it's pinched against that gear, which drives it through this opening. The opening under here is where we attach the hot end, and the hot end, when screwed in place, will finish the extruder. You need one stepper motor, the extruder gear, one M3 set screw, thread locker blue, the bottom half of the extruder, one M3 6mm screw, and one M3 25mm screw. This last motor is the extruder motor, so mark it with the letter E. First, make sure your motor wires are pointing in the right direction. You can see mine are headed down towards the direction of the bearings. That's where you want yours. You're going to take that motor, and you're going to feed it through this opening here in the extruder cart. Just lift it on up, and just hold it in place with one hand, and drop in a 6mm M3 screw in the top left corner. You're only going to attach one screw at this time. There's a reason why there's some other things that need tightened in place before you can tighten all of the corners down. Just get one little screw started up here. Just make it snug. With that in place, I'm actually ready to go ahead and drop in the base of the extruder. The base is uniquely shaped. You want to make sure that the part that has the hole for your filament is going to be on the right hand side here. It's going to line up just like this, and you're going to take an M3 25mm screw and feed it through the bottom left corner now. So every screw that I've attached to the motor so far is on the left. I always advise when you tighten screws on a motor, just make them snug. If you over tighten it, you can rip out the threads inside the motor. The base of the extruder should be horizontal. However, if yours is slightly slanted, when you go to attach the right-hand screw, you can loosen up the left-hand screw to straighten things out. As usual, I like to pre-install the set screws. So I'm going to take the set screw here and just feed it into the extruder gear. I don't need to put it all the way through there, I just want to get it started. It's kind of hanging out over the end there. I'm going to add some thread locker to it in just a moment. The extruder gear caps onto the extruder motor, and it's important that the set screw lines up with the flat side of the motor shaft. So I like to point the flat side of the motor shaft to the top. And when I drop this in place, it gets a little tricky because it doesn't slide all the way back. That's because it's a really, really snug fit. All I need to do is just loosen that corner. That's why we only tightened one corner down. Get a little bit of space and then push this back, not all the way. But I want to line it up so that that ridge there, see those little teeth? That's what's going to grip the filament. I want to line it up with the hole where the filament feeds through. Now I can tighten that little screw back in place. And believe me, this is a very snug fit here. Now I need to apply thread locker to the set screw, but it's important that I do this with the piece standing upright the way you see it here. That way the gear doesn't slide at all when I go to tighten it in place. Now I do want to get enough thread locker on here that it's going to be secure, but I don't want too much to have it drip down and around the frame here. So just get the right amount and tighten it in place. If your thread locker ran over, you may have gotten it in the teeth of the extruder gear. That happened to me, and I recommend you just wipe it away clean. Also double check that the filament opening here is still dead center with the teeth of the extruder gear. If yours is no longer centered, it may have shifted when you went to tighten the set screw. Don't worry about reapplying the thread locker, just do it quickly, reposition it, and tighten down that set screw. You need the top half of the extruder and the plastic spacer, one M3 25mm screw, one M4 12mm screw, one of the 624 bearings, one M3 30mm Phillips head screw, one spring, one hex nut, and one washer. To assemble the extruder arm, I've grouped together all the parts that connect to it. The M4 12mm screw passes through a bearing, the M3 25mm screw passes through this spacer and washer, the 30mm Phillips head screw passes through this spring and ends with this nut. Start with the bearing, place it in this slot here. One side is non-threaded, the other side is threaded. Point the threaded side away from you, feed the screw through the top. You can tighten this in place by hand or tighten it up with an Allen wrench, but this should always spin freely. Then take that 30 millimeter screw, drop it through the top, add the spring, cap it with the nut. Take that spacer, feed it through the back. The screw and washer should be joined first, and then slide that through the spacer. There's your top view, there's the front view, that's the finished arm. Take the extruder arm, hold on to that spacer in the back so it doesn't fall out, and you're going to get this screw to drop in that top corner of the motor. This other screw passes into a little hole down here in the base. If you can line that up now, that'd be great, but primarily get the screw in the top corner tightened in place.
Tighten it until it's snug. Do not over tighten the screw. From this side view, you can see that my screw with the spring has dropped into the base of the extruder. If you didn't tighten your hex nut a lot, yours may not have dropped in like this. We still have some work to do with the base of the extruder, so don't worry about this right now. As long as you have everything attached, you're ready to move on.